This week, I'm here with McGuire McManus. Yes, you heard that right. McGuire McManus, that is her real name. She's a photographer based out of Brooklyn. And I'm in her studio right now because we were doing a photo shoot and I wanted to parlay photo shoot into interview because McGuire is a doer. Uh, I met McGuire at a real estate open house where she was doing portraits on the cuff at no, co at no cost. Mm -mm. At no cost, she, for free. She was doing portraits for brokers who were coming to the broker's open house. And one, I loved that. Two, I then followed her on IG. So I guess, you know, your ROI right there is me follow you on IG. And then I commissioned you to now have a photo shoot. Yeah, full circle. I love that. Yeah. So tell me, what are you doing right now? So I have been a freelance photographer for a year and a half. But before that, I could come from like an in-house brand background. So um, now that I'm on my own, I am kind of doing everything. So within photography, again, I do portraits. I work with families. I do events. Um, I work with business owners. What's your, what's your passion within that? Because I know like a lot of photographers that I speak with, not on the show, but just in general, they either love to do portraits or they love to do lifestyle. Some love to do like engagement shoots and family photography. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that you asked that because I've kind of been having that like crisis of like, how do you narrow down and like, what am I really passionate about? Because again, when you first start your business, I'm sure you feel the same way. Like you say yes to a lot of stuff, just either make ends meet, get exposure, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but what I was just having this conversation with someone about what I'm passionate about is working with like individuals and I call it like intimate moments. Um, something that I have been really passionate about is like working with mothers. Um, so like I just had a maternity shoot um, earlier this week and that filled me up so much. With baby in the belly or post? With I've done both. Actually, I am really grateful. A lot of my clients, they'll do baby and belly. So like while the, she's pregnant and then once the baby has arrived, we'll do a, a newborn shoot. And that is, I get a lot of... Um, like that fills me up because I get to see the process from start to finish and also just like a repeat client is amazing. And again, it's just an in intimate, uh, personal moment. How do you like hone in on that niche? Like how, how can you then get more mothers to book you so you could, I mean, there are a lot of, pre we're in New York City. Yeah. There are yeah. a, lot of a lot of pregnant women, yeah. a lot of women who have just had babies. Yeah. How, well, how do you get into yeah. that? And have you been looking into really target marketing that niche? So looking into it, um, that's what's interesting is as a photographer, like kind of once you pick a lane, um, one, you get hired more for doing that, but also it th then you get excluded from a lot more. So that's why I've been very timid on making that full leap because I don't want to be excluded from being hired by brands for editorials. You know, so it's yeah, like- Yeah, that isn't like a maternity shoot. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like once you commit into the whole like, wedding world, pregnancy world, uh, family world. It's really, um, it's sometimes it's hard for people and um, hiring managers and other creatives to see you as someone who can do more than that. Um, so that's why I've been, again, very timid to make that full leap. Um, I'm really grateful, like, like you said, in New York City, there's so many women out there and I have been really lucky to have a lot of like word of mouth. Um, but again, like we were talking off camera, it's like, once you start posting about it, then people like you'll pop up yep. um, and they'll be like, I love that image. I want that of myself. I want that intimate image in my home. Do you have a coach or a mentor? I don't. It's funny that you say that because one of my other friends uh, who's actually in real estate, he was like, you should talk with like someone. It's been really beneficial for me. I don't. One thousand percent. Because right now you're, you, you know, you're on the fence with should I be going 100 miles per hour into the maternity shooting, but I don't want to pigeonhole myself there. Yeah. Whereas like a coach, someone who's been in the photography world yeah. for 10, 15, yeah. 25 plus years even, yeah. if you're going to an elder, and they could really guide you into how to dive into that world, but also show that you're open to other stuff, or it might be beneficial to you to just go fucking 200 miles per hour into maternity. Yeah, no, it's it's, interesting that you bring this up too because it's just something that's been on my mind but i'm really grateful i have a, a really strong community of photographers here so i mean i'm, I'm able to, yeah i'm able to like 
bounce these kind of like problems or like predicaments off to them. But at the end of the day, they can't make my business decision for me. Yep. You know, so I'm grateful for my network and my community. Um, but like you said, maybe it's time for one step further to really like talk with a professional about what I should professionally do because it's not my strong suit. I'm a photographer. Like I'm not always into like business and strategy, you know? That's why, that's why you have to have a team. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. A team or like a mentor or confidant. Yeah. That's been the most interesting part of being a freelance photographer for the last year and a half is, um, again, I come from a brand background. So I always had a team around me. I had you know, graphic designers, art directors, or I even just had people on different teams, yep. product teams. And now it's just me. Where everyone was an expert in that field. And there was always someone to help you out. Yeah. Well, not that everyone's always helpful, but there should be someone to help L you out. To lend a helping hand. Exactly. It was another, uh, another person, you know, a sounding board, if you might say. Yeah. And like just having concepting meetings with other people. Now it's just me, which is, it gives me a lot of freedom and a lot of, it's a lot of learning, but it's also can be isolating sometimes. I could definitely, definitely relate. Yeah. Uh, so where did it all begin? Let's go back. Like McGuire got into photography at age? Uh, 14. Well, I guess I could say uh, even earlier than that because I uh, was born in 93 and my childhood was full of digital cameras, like the point and shoots, like the Kodak. So me and my friends, like it was just selfies, uploading it to MySpace or whatever. So I've always been into like visual like media, but I got my first like DSLR photography camera when I was 14. My parents got it for me for Christmas um, because at school I was really into uh, broadcast and maybe I wanted to do yearbook. So I love this. And where are you from? I'm from Dallas originally. Cool. Yeah. So my parents got me that camera. And again, in high school, I, I was able to do that. And I took photos of my friends on the side. Like I would subject them to photo shoots. They're heinous, but like <laughs> it started really in high school. I love that. And then how did that, you know, then roll into, did you go to school for photography? Yeah, so I went to University of Missouri, which is a uh, school in the Midwest. And Was that your focus, like going photography to a top photography school? So I more wanted to focus on journalism at the time, which, um, I'm glad I'm not in journalism now for a plethora, plethora of reasons, but I went for journalism and originally specifically photojournalism. Again, at the time it was 2012, social media wasn't as big of a thing. Um, it was, and there wasn't a commercial photography course. Um, so the, the career of a photojournalist was really bleak at the time. Um, it's completely changed with social media and connection to uh, editors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, long shot. Just like exposure and like being able to DM someone yeah. and someone seeing your portrait and saying, hey, I have someone that I want that portrait. Or even with Instagram, I know people getting work and just getting contacts from someone like you from the explore page. Exactly. I need to be better about my Which hashtags. is nuts <laughs> yeah. from the explore yeah. page. Yeah. And that's why, you know, when you're talking about being like, the maternity shooter, mm -hmm. like if you went 200 miles per hour as like the maternity shooter, then you might be able to get high level lifestyle shots yeah. in that field versus uh, a jack of all trades, master of none, being like a master of maternity. Yeah. If you grow in that field, yeah. in that niche, then like you could be the lifestyle shooter for that type of stuff. You this podcast came at the right time because again earlier this week I was having this exact conversation with my husband just like it's great to be a jack of all trades it makes me feel really confident it makes me feel like um everything I've worked for and really well-rounded but I'm kind of at the point in my career again where I need to like focus in um and so it's just this conversation helps me push that way. So as an, exa uh, an example, as like within real estate, yeah. it's like someone who might say, yeah, I, I do rentals, I do commercial real estate, I do residential real estate, I do sales, instead of like someone who is, I sell townhomes. Yeah. I sell townhomes in the Upper East Side in Brooklyn Heights. That guy is the guy that if someone is selling their townhouse, they're gonna go, go to the to guy it. who sells townhouses. Exactly. Not the guy who, has this big network and sells all this stuff. No, they're gonna go to the yeah. townhouse guy. Yeah, and on that note, and again, it's the same with real estate agents. Like, again, you you own a lot of, like, it's your integrity and like, you, you know, it's you. You have to choose that decision. And like, 
I'd rather have quality over quantity right now. And I think when you're a jack of all trades, um, you get in this like churn and burn mindset. And yep. especially in New York, it's exhausting. Uh, 1,000%. I mean, yeah. we're in Brooklyn right now, but yeah. if anything, we're in Dumbo, which is like the busiest part of Brooklyn. Yeah. Where it's just like nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And you're in a building of creatives where people yeah. are constantly doing things. Yeah. So I could see how you're pulled in a thousand directions. Exactly. When did you decide to go out on your own? I decided, again, it's been about uh, officially a little over a year, but a year and a half ago, I was in house somewhere and I went part time so I could freelance more. Cool. Um, it was during COVID, I was in a fine art program at a school in the Lower East Side called ICP. It's like a year long program. And right after that, I really wanted to be freelance, but it was post COVID. Um, I was new ish to the city. Like I had only lived here for two and a half years. It, it wasn't the time, like I didn't have the clients. I didn't have the confidence. So again, I was in house and I was um, making really good work in house. But then I was like, okay, my side hustle is taking off. I was able to, again, go part time. And then um, at the beginning of last year, I went full time. What was the catalyst to push you to go full time into this? I think there was also where I was, there was a lot of like uh, business strife. So it was also just, it was kind of like the perfect storm. You know, it was like, I don't know what's happening here, but I do know what's happening on the side. And I'm feeling like this is the time. And it's been something I've been thinking about. So it was just like a combination of those two. So now let's call it 18 months you've been on your yeah. own. There's been ebbs, there've been flows. Mm -hmm. Has there been any ebbs that have made you think, what the fuck am I doing? Let's go back to corporate life. I'm not going to say all the time because I am like, it could be all, this is listen, 18 months is nothing. Yeah. It's not, nothing. Yeah. I think, I, I think again, the biggest thing for me is not having a, a partner like in my business, someone to just like even review images with, I, again, I have a community and sometimes we a network. Yeah. But like, it's not the day to day, like, Hey, would you make this select or this select or Hey, what equipment would you use to achieve this? Like it's a lot of me on my own, like Googling or looking at reference images. Um, you get better by doing that. Exactly. So that's why it's like, I, I think about it whenever, again, it's like, I, I have two shoots in one day. I'm lugging my shit all the way across town. I'm stressed. I'm not sure if the images turned out right. Like that's whenever I'm like, it would be so much easier to sit at a desk. But I remember sitting at the desk being like, I wish I was, I wish I was moving my body. I wish I was creating. Yeah. So it's. And listen, yeah. you're only going to get better. Month exactly. after month, year after year. Yeah. As long as you like stick with it. And right now, we're, you know, I'd say Q1 2024, by the summer, you're going to, based on the conversation we have right now, by the summer, you're going to be much more honed in on what you want to be doing and what makes you happy. Yeah. On a daily basis. That's the And goal. by doing that, you're going to elevate your skills in that category, which is yeah. cool. Which is very cool. That's the goal. I love it. <laughs> um, what are the next three to six months look like for McGuire? Three to six months. Um, again, I just got this studio space back in December. Um, so again, just like fine tuning some of my studio skills um, would be great because- Was that scary taking on the, the rent? Yeah, because again, it's just me. And it's like, luckily I, I am really good, I think with money. I don't know what my husband would say, but I feel like I'm really good with money and I'm, uh, not a overspender, I'm not a manic spender, but yeah, taking on an extra rent is a total gamble. Um, the goal is that it would pay off, like pay for itself. Um, and so far it has. And again, it's also just nice to have a space for myself instead of having it in the second bedroom. Yep. And also just being able to leave home to go to your space versus having, having every, like I, I liked having a home office, then I had a kid, so the home office was now a nursery, and then yep. we have a, a desk yep. in the side of the living room, which I hate. It's, it was, I hate. My, mine was literally like a, a triangle desk like yeah. in the corner. It, and I, it was like, I'm just staring right. at the wall, and then life and, is happening behind me, I'm just shoved in the corner. And being, right, so being yeah. able to come here to this beautiful studio exactly. with 12 and a half foot I ceilings, I know. and every, and your whole setup, yeah. it's magical, and it's your first office, your next yes. one's only gonna be better. That's which is very cool. It's exactly what I was thinking the other day. I was like, I'm really grateful. Like I like it's not lost on me how grateful I should be for everything that I have and I've I'm I've come into and I love this space. So I love love yeah. that. So talk to me. What what are you reading right now? 
oh my gosh, what am I reading right now? Um, I am reading an author. Her name is Jen Began. I think that's how you say her name. She's a fictional author and she just writes like super off the wall stuff, but she's like on the New York Times bestseller. It's called Big Swiss. Okay. So if you go to any um, bookstore, it'll be kind of on that like front fiction. And what's one book that you would recommend to anybody to read? Hmm. If I'm being quite honest, I'm not that big of a reader. So one doesn't like come up for me. And again, I read a lot of like fiction just to like as escapism. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I started like, reading fiction. Maybe we talk about this all the time. Talk, talk about this over the last couple months. I just started reading fiction like three months ago. Yeah. And now I've banged out three or four books. Yeah. Um, it was never my style. I'm a nonfiction yeah. guy. Yeah. But I get it. And I find that I, fa <clears throat> I found the style of fiction that I like. Yeah. Like that's what it's all I've about. read a science fiction and it wasn't really for me, but I did it. Yeah. I got through it. Yeah. A murder fiction. Yeah. Wasn't for me. I actually like hated it. Yeah. But I was reading it, doing it with my wife. Yeah. So I finished it. Um, but if there is one book that you would recommend to anybody, what would that be? I guess like in, in the spirit of talking about Jen Began, she has, uh, like a, a few books, but the first one that I read of hers, I think it was called Vacuum in the Dark. And again, if you like fiction and you want something like very escapist, but also just like, what the, f like, she's kind of like that. Um, so Vacuum in the Dark by Jen Began is probably my favorite if you're just looking for something fun, which I think is why you go to shows. And so that's why I go, that's why I go to books, Yeah, fiction books. Have you read uh, Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow? That was a book club read there last go. year. Yeah. yeah, that was the second. That was picture. really good. Really good. Yeah, yeah. So I've read like, again, I um, even though I'm not a big reader, I do all like the book club books with some cool. of my friends. So like, it's totally basic, but I loved where the crawdads sing like years ago. Like I loved that book. I'm from the south though, so uh -huh. I like loved. Just it, it hit that. home. It hit home. It totally did. Uh -huh. Not that I like lived in a marsh, but. <laughs> <laughs> so McGuire. Yes. Give me one word for anyone trying to make it. Um, oh man. What's the word where you just like, are able to like bounce back from stuff? Resilience. I'd say resilience. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully that was. That was fantastic. Okay. Quickest step we've ever done. <laughs> McGuire. Yes. McManus, <laughs> photography. We're here in the studio. Yes. Thank you so much for great. having me. Thank you for coming. And you have to see his well, campaign. Thank you for me. His campaign that we're doing. <laughs> thank you.